Hi everyone. Welcome to Clone Compounding, where our mission is to learn from others in order to achieve financial independence. In today's video, let's take a look at the latest insights by Terry Smith, a well-known value investor running the Fundsmith portfolio. Mr. Smith recently released his fund's semi-annual letter in July 2023. The most important aspect are the portfolio changes made by Mr. Smith. This includes selling or exiting Amazon as well as Adobe completely earlier this year. Let's take a deeper look. Fundamental Performance, Meta First, Mr. Smith starts his letter by sharing that Meta has been their biggest gainer in the first half of 2023. He reminds us that at one point Meta's stock was trading at a FCF yield of 8.7%. And at this level it was either too cheap or a so-called value trap. Mr. Smith strongly believed in Meta being too cheap in the $90.100 range. He reminds us that clearly Meta's share price performance has been volatile but our primary focus should remain on its fundamental performance. Also, he suggests that we all need to try to ignore the cacophony of noise from commentators which can be useless. Investing outside core franchise, Amazon. Second, Mr. Smith shares that the most noteworthy item of turnover so far this year has been the fund sale of Amazon, which they had begun purchasing only in July 2021. The immediate cause of the sale was their concern over potential capital misallocation by relatively new CEO Andy Jassy. Mr. Smith shared that while starting out Jassy listed down sound principles for investments such as uh, be big and capable of delivering good returns on capital b serve an area of the market in which consumers are not already well served c amazon had to have a differentiated approach to competitors and d amazon had to have or be able to acquire competence to execute these principles provided quite some comfort to Mr. Smith as purchasing a stock that they had shied away from before for years However, it is always easier to talk the talk than it is to walk the walk and the CEO, Andy Jassy's, pronouncement that he wanted Amazon to seek routes to get bigger in grocery retail ran counter to all these principles. In Mr. Smith's view grocery retail has none of these characteristics and Amazon has already stubbed its toe in this sector with the Whole Foods acquisition. Mr. Smith's view is that where companies choose to invest outside a powerful core franchise in which they already have expertise he believes they are likely to destroy value, and especially so where they are entering a sector which already has poor returns. This led them to exit Amazon. Interesting to note that while Mr. Smith fully exited Amazon, another legendary value investor Mr. Seth Klarman purchased and added Amazon in Q2 2023. We'll share more about that in the upcoming video. Look back and forward outlook. The past six months have seen a slowdown in revenue growth from technology companies in their portfolio. Large technology companies have in a sense become victims of their own success. Their growth over the past decade means that they are now such a large part of the economies in which they operate that they have become inevitably more cyclical. At the time of the 2008-2009 recession, Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet and Meta had combined sales of $125 billion. Today, Apple generates three times that number on its own and the combined sales of these four companies are as near as $1 trillion. As a result, the economic slowdown means that where Microsoft grew sales at 18% last year we are looking at more like 7% this year, similarly for other tech companies. To sum up, conditions are tougher and our companies are mostly having to cope with slower revenue growth and or higher input costs. However, that's what happens from time to time so we are mostly relaxed about it. Turning from company fundamentals to the macro environment, what level of interest rates will be required to tame inflation? We don't know. Will there be a recession? Of course, but we have no idea when. What will happen in Ukraine? We haven't a clue. Will China take action over Taiwan and how will the United States respond? We have no view. Even if we had, we are not sure how markets would react. Fortunately, it continues to be the case that we do not invest on the basis of our predictions about macroeconomics and geopolitics. 
Whilst we await the outcome of these economic and geopolitical conundrums we will seek to continue to do what we set out to do. Which is to assemble a portfolio of high-quality companies and hold on to them so that their inherent ability to compound in value will determine how we perform over the long term. For now, that's it from us. Hope you enjoyed and learned from this video. Smash that like button and subscribe to receive more videos on memos and write-ups from top investors. Thanks for watching.